I'm Carol Drouel from Paris 8 University, and today I will speak about martial arts servicing a spiritual theater, traditional and contemporary forms. In this paper, I propose to question what martial art practices as bodily and spiritual practices can bring to a theater which aims at the embodiment of an invisible on stage, thus a theater that I will call of the spiritual. To try to define this frightening term, especially in France, I refer to the work of Pierre Hadot on ancient spiritual exercises. The spiritual scope of martial arts will be here a postulate that I will not have time to justify, inasmuch as it will be discussed in other panels. I thus inscribe this reflection in an approach to Asian martial arts as practices of the self integrating incarnated spiritual exercises, which aim at developing the body-spirit unity of the practitioner, holistic conception of being, and his her link to the various dimensions of invisible, spirits, deities, the beyond or the universe within the framework of a cosmogony specific to each martial art. Situating myself in a transcultural and historical perspective, I first ask the question of the presence of the spiritual in the engagement of martial practices in traditional forms of theatre in Asia. Then I propose to approach forms of the spiritual in contemporary Western theatre particularly the path of Anatoly Vassiliev and Claude Régy, in order to question the practice of martial arts in this context. With the help of multiple sources, testimonies either published or collected by myself in interviews, analysis of performative practices, anthropological works, my approach here is qualitative and does not claim to exhaust the subject and list all the occurrences and forms of the spiritual in theatre. First part, sacred theatre in old Asian forms of performance, Katakali example. While the religious origin of theatre in the West is today being questioned, or at least qualified, in the light of the study of other sources, such as storytelling, this is not the case with traditional Asian theatres, whose central purpose is to represent the relationship of man to the invisible and the stories of God, demons or spirits of the dead. The old theatrical forms of Asia are fundamentally the place of actuation in images and movements of a cosmogony. The relationship between the art of the actor and the material dimension is fundamental and the link between theatricality and spirituality is actualized by bodies of the actors or and dancers. However, the bringing into play of these bodies that believe is most often based on a martial practice. Today, I have chosen a form of Indian theatre named Katakali, for which there are many sources and a rigorous transmission from generation to generation which has allowed us to preserve the traditional codifications and training principle from Kalari Payat. If the appearance of this theatre dance of Kerala is historically dated from the year 1657, its origins are much older and its gestural code is based on the Natya Shastra, a treatise on the art of the stage written around the 2nd century BC. The purpose of the Katakali is the representation of the stories drawn from sacred and epic literature, the loves and rivalries of Hindu gods, including the various chapters of the Mahabharata and Ramayana, but always through a very human painting, despite the highly stylized character of the form. Katakali is thus a sacred theater by its very purpose but it convokes on stage a strong bodily presence of the actor-dancer and at the same time a disappearance of his own body, as Arjun Raina analyzed, drawn on Philip Zarelli's works. This balance is required for humanizing the behavior of the gods within a strong codification of gestures and interpretation. 
The gestural work of the actor dancers draws on the principle of Kalari Payat, a martial art from Kerala, which has been identified, as you know, as the oldest martial art of which we have historical traces around the 2nd century BC. We can thus notice in the first place the tracks of the Kalari Payat in the foundation of the actor's posture. Practice is part of the actor's daily routine. The actor devotes at least one hour and a half before dawn to a general warm-up of the body, from Kalari Payat named Meyarapu, which means strong body. We can see similarities between Chilipu, basic movements, and Meyarapu training in these images. The actor dancer of Katakali transforms his body through these exercises associated with messages, training of each part of the body, and in particular of the eyes and hands on which expressivity is centered, and creates this way an extra daily body in order to be transcended. In a certain way, one seeks to modify the nature of the body in order to represent gods on stage, to alter the internal structure of the body, the image of the actor as of his body, and the energetic functioning that makes it efficient, according to Larry Tremblay. The practice of Kalari Payat thus plays a part on the pre-expressive level in what is usually now called actor's training. Moreover, in the theatricalized stories of Katakali, the gods wage war on each other and wield weapons, either concretely on stage or symbolically through dance gestures. Martial practice participates in the theatricality of the show. It makes visible and aestheticizes the power and violence of the gods, entire sequences of Kalari Payat being repeated for the combat scenes but the gestures are more flowing, so that they are more fluid, more aesthetic, since efficiency is not their purpose. Some authors hypothesize that this presence of fighting in mythical stories explains the involvement of Kalari Payat in Katakali, and the fact that, at first, actors were recruited among warriors of the Naya royal house, who were experts in Kalari Payat. However, is the contribution of the Kalari Payat only gestural? What is its spiritual role in this sacred theater? Because it offers at the same time a fundamental element of physical transformation of the actor and the gestural grammar for actuating the battles of the gods, I hypothesize that the Kalari Payat is a tool to transcend the human nature of the actor dancer of Katakali. So the physical and spiritual scopes of the practice are both engaged in this sacred theater. It is the support of an embodiment of entities in which actors and spectators believe. It develops in a society where the cosmogony carried by martial arts and theatrical forms are common and where the holistic conception of being is the law. Second part, searching for a theater of the spiritual in the contemporary West. In contemporary Western theater, the place of gods and spirits is less obvious, as the current world treats with great mistrust the paradigm of the spiritual, which seems to convey a whole traumatic past in the relationship of the religious and keeps in Western thought a premodern and non-scientific connotation. Yet the Frenchman Anton Artaud, who aspired to a metaphysical theater, is still today a fundamental theoretical reference for contemporary sacred theater. As early as the 1930s, he saw Asian theater as metaphysics in action and made it the pattern of a sacred theater. From the 1960s onwards, a whole lineage of theater practitioners and thinkers, of which Peter Brook and Jezio Krotowski can be considered as the leaders, thrived in the West by referring to Arto, whom they considered to be a visionary and a prophet. However, martial practices only began to assert themselves in this stream in the 1990s, 
as for example in the Grotowski Institutes in Wroclaw, Poland, where Kalaripayat, Aikido and Capoeira are integrated into workshops and theatrical creations in the framework of a vertical theatre. Grotowski's expression, taken up by Jaroslav Fred, head of this institute and stage director. I now propose to analyze two single approaches. Anatoly Vasiliev, a Russian director whose career has become international, is part of this filiation. Since the 1990s, he has been claiming a metaphysical theater, a theater given by the sky and coming from the earth, a theater of mystery, in reference to medieval mystery places, which appears to be the carrying out of Arthur's project, an incantatory metaphysical theater. He inscribes his creative approach in the Russian culture fund of orthodoxy and conciliarity, and he conceives the theatre in a mode close of the religious, making frequent references to the Russian icon as a place of revelation, a model of his theatre. From the point of view of his technical conception of theatre, he refers to the line of physical actions, derived from the latest teachings of Konstantin Stanislavski and disseminated by Maria Knebel, whose pupil he was in Moscow. Thus, he aims at creating a theatre of the spiritual through a very material work of physical actions. He introduced the practice of Wushu, China's martial arts, in particular Tai Chi, in his work from 1995 onwards and considers martial practice as a tool for building both the physical acting and the breath necessary for his approach to the text, an incantatory word that he calls affirmative intonation. Several martial arts masters have collaborated with him since then, notably François Liu, whom I have been able to meet, and several masters of arms whom he received in Moscow in his theatre school in the early 2000s. He integrated intensive martial practice mornings into the rehearsal sessions. To understand concretely what it's about on stage, I propose to watch a short excerpt from Mede Materio, Media Materio, by Einar Müller. The acting finds its internal structure in the practice of Wushu. Valérie Dreville, the actress, testifies to that very clearly in her book on the rehearsal of the show. The tension is perceptible, both phonically and physically, creating an intensity that goes beyond human reality, making this show an incantation, a magical rite, Valérie Dreville will say. Other shows by Vasiliev are more characterized in their aesthetic form by martial practice, such as Liliad Song 23 in 2006 at the Avignon Festival, where the ancient Greek narrative is updated on stage by gestural codes derived from Wushu, 
with numerous references to the Tao linked to sacred diphonic Siberian songs. It therefore both the internal and external dimensions of Wushu practices that are involved in Vasiliev's metaphysical theater project in which several spiritual influences intercross orthodoxy, Taoism, animism. Finally, let us look at a completely different approach, that of Claude Régy. You may say what a strange, even paradoxical choice to talk about Claude Régy here. He did not want to create a spiritual theatre and did not practice any martial art. So why would I study here his work in my presentation, apart from the tribute I wish to pay him after his death last year? Claude Régy, when asked about the nature of the theatrical experience, could answer this. I chose spiritual experience. All of Régy's remarks show a great mistrust of established religions. On the other hand, departing from the dogmatic framework, he willingly quotes the Tao, especially in his last writings. This Taoist inspiration is brought to life on stage by the search of emptiness. On the stage, which is always two-thirds empty, but also of the actor, who lets himself be crossed by the text. Silence, long and deep silences within the text. Stillness, where Reggie works on the density of the actor's inner movements. And slowness, all movements are slowed down leading to a magnified glass effect on what is being crossed in acting. So, the actor has both to be and not to be, to be totally inscribed in a non-duality, an uncertainty. Yen Budo, an actor who has played in many of his shows, confided to me that working with Reggie was like a koan, a zen insolvable charade the actor always being faced with an impossibility, a non-knowledge. His conception of the spirit was nevertheless deeply embodied. The spirit is carnal, but spirit, he said. The materiality of the body, concreteness or organic dimension, according Yan Budo, was at the center of this theater that Reggie wanted the order of the dead, thus of the spirits. However, no physical preparation was proposed, nor requested by the director, each actor having to find his own solution to build this embodiment of the spirit passing through the emptiness. By studying the career path of the Claude Régis actors, I was able to highlight, on one hand, that all of them needed individual physical preparation, and, on the other hand, that many of them practiced a martial art. For example, Valérie Dréville, who performed Comme un chant de David in 2002, Axel Bukoslavski and Jean-Quentin Chatelain testified to their daily practice of Tai Chi. So does Olivier Bonnefoy by associating it with Qigong. This choice seems totally adequate based on the folk inspired by Taoism, also to act biblical texts. The career path of Yan Budo, whom I met, is significantly different. He has no regular practice of either martial arts or meditation, but has built up a long physical preparation made up of various elements that he was able to come across in his career. Karate, Judo, Boxing, Zen, Meditation, BMC. Thus, from his various personal psychocorporal experiences, he achieved a kind of physical and mental syncretism at the service of his work with Claude Régy. According to him, it was not useful to meditate before playing because Claude's work was just that which is in the line with Marie-Madeleine mervon Roux, who analyzes Régis' show as meditative exercises, spiritual exercises. But on the other hand, a deep and daily physical preparation was indispensable, especially in the last show, Rêve et Folie, Dream and Madness, 
for his work on posture and breathing, which required a particular pose and a very low center of gravity. In Claude Régis' theatres, the martial arts come into being through the discreet and underground way of the performer's individual path, answering the physical and mental, not to mention spiritual, demands of the project. Thus, Claude Régis was able to stage directors transformed by a practice, ready to be crossed by the world, embody it with a spiritual background which was not explicit in the shows. Martial art practices thus appear to be modes of operation for the incarnation of the spirit on stage, whether in theatres bearing the same religious and spiritual cultures, which is not surprising, or in contemporary Western approaches to the theatre of the spiritual, which is more so. Through their ability to resolve the antagonisms, body-spirit, presence-absence, as we saw with the Katakali, priest, warrior, two words defining the actor according to Grotowski, sky, earth in Vasiliev's metaphysical theatre, or else to be, not to be in Claude Grace's theatre, they offer a pre-expressive tool that, referring to Francesco Varela's neurophenomenology, allows the realization of the body inscription of the spirit on stage but of a spirit from another world. It's interesting to point out that the contemporary creators of a theatre of the spiritual, by interesting themselves in a return to the source of the theatre, refer to the ritual of the pre classical ancient or medieval world, while creating new, even innovative forms. Their recurring references to Taoist folk can be understood as indicating the capacity of the Tao to offer an alternative to Western religious conceptions or to enter a relationship with them in a syncretic folk that gives way to a unity of body-spirit, the keystone of a theatre of the spiritual.